I'm about to share the must know indicators that could skyrocket your Bitcoin profits this upcoming bull run. Let's get into it. You're probably familiar with the four year cycle. What you might not be familiar with is the fact that phase two represents the final year of a four year cycle and phase two is by far the most profitable time to be exposed to Bitcoin. In today's video, we're going to be going through some of the most important trading view indicators that you could be paying attention to that have historically been extremely accurate with predicting the price movements and trend of Bitcoin. Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is JT and you're watching Black Box Trading. I have been a cryptocurrency investor for the last eight years and I've seen it all. I've seen the tops, I've seen the lows, not only in price but in emotion and with a lot of the uncertainty that's happening in the news right now, a lot of people are becoming very shaken emotionally in the markets and that's making me extremely bullish. So I'm going to share with you some of the most important fundamental things to be paying attention to to kind of guide you through this volatility and guide you through this uncertainty so that you can get out on the other end with more profits in your accounts. So let's take a look at this first chart. Now, the first one that I want to take a look at is just a simple one. It's the fear and greed index. You're probably already familiar with this. This is not the greatest measure of uh, price uh, expectation, but it is really important with sentiment and sentiment right now is low. We are at a 37. The market is afraid and we've only had a really small pullback. This tells me that the patience of the market is running thin. And when the patience of the market is running thin, usually people are really easily able to ditch their positions. And when they ditch their positions, they have to sell it to somebody. When the impatient part of the market is selling to the patient part of the market, you've pretty much locked up those sats and you've removed those from the supply. The smartest investors in this market are buying. There's no question about that, whether it's between BlackRock, some of the other ETFs, other nation states like, uh, well, El Salvador has been stacking, but they just spoke with the vice president of Argentina. Anywhere you look, smart, sophisticated investors are buying and anywhere you look, the retail investor is questioning everything and they're probably selling or maybe even shorting this market, which is bonkers to me. So one of the first things I want to look at is just price and look at the historical data as to what has happened in the past. What has happened in the past does not guarantee the results of the future, but the historical data often rhymes with what can be expected. I want to draw your attention to these blue lines here. These blue lines, these blue lines represent lows in the market. Over here in January of 2015, 1,064 days later, we saw the top of Bitcoin in November, in December of 2017. Back here, the low again, December of 2018, one year later, we saw the top 1,064 days later in November of 2021. So if we go from the low of this cycle, 1,064 days later, brings us to October of 2025. So that's kind of the time-based expectation. Um, I also wanna draw your attention to the acceleration phase of each one of these cycles. Most of Bitcoin's gains happen at the very last part of the cycle. It all comes together in the final year of uh, Bitcoin's four year cycle. Back here, we had a 10,000% move. When did that kick off? October 2012. But over here in the 2017 cycle, we had a 3,000 plus percent move. When did that kick off? In October of 2016. Then we have this cycle over here with a 554% move in the acceleration phase. And when did that kick off? In October of 2020. Okay, so you might be asking yourself, four year cycle, why is it four years? Does it have to do with the Bitcoin halving? The popular narrative would tell you that it has to do with the Bitcoin halving, but I think it has to do with the M2 money supply liquidity cycles. And we can take a look at that by taking a look at M2 money supply. So here in the green is representing points in the market where the global money supply is increasing. Another way of saying that is when interest rates are lowered. When interest rates are lowered, money becomes cheap, more money is produced in the banks, and you see an increase of the overall money supply. 
these periods of red represent a decrease in the money supply. So you can see quite clearly every time Bitcoin is in a bear market, it is coming on a contraction of the money supply. Every time uh, the money supply is increasing, Bitcoin is in a bull market. We can see back here as well, money supply increasing, Bitcoin is in a bull market. Money supply decreasing, Bitcoin is in a bear market. And now, right here, we have an increase in supply. The Fed just lowered rates. That is the Federal Reserve of the United States. We also had rate cuts in Canada. We had rate cuts in Britain. We had rate cuts in the European Union. We had rate cuts in Japan. All of the central banks are issuing currency. And that is a trend that historically speaking lasts for about a year. So as long as the money printer keeps on going burr, you can expect the Bitcoin number go up. Now I'm gonna take this one step further. Let's let's take, the, this is the ebb and flow of currency evaluation. Let's actually turn on the M2 money supply. Let's turn this off. And this is just another way of looking at it. So this is the total supply as it increases. And you can see right here, as this is increasing, Bitcoin is in a bull market. The moment it begins to retrace, Bitcoin enters a bear market. Then we have issuance coming again. Bitcoin's in a bull market. We have a retraction. Bitcoin's in a bear market. Again, Bitcoin in a bull market on currency expansion. Bitcoin in a bear market on currency contraction. And when we look at the M2 money supply right now, we have just experienced a breakout we have a technical breakout here on the m2 money supply so in my opinion we are about to go full on bull this is not a drill these are facts these are the facts of the market and how it moves and it's funny that all of these types of moves always seem to align with uncertainty in the market. It's almost as if you're being manipulated to believe one thing while the facts and the realities of the charts are showing something very, very different. So if we are entering a new period of monetary expansion, what can we expect as far as a price target for Bitcoin? So I'll grab a fractal from this market cycle low to the market cycle top 100, 1064 days. I will bring that up here. I'll do the same over here with this market cycle low to market cycle high, and I'll bring that over here. Let's make that a different color. So basically the targets for this cycle are anywhere between $110,000 and $540,000. But here's the interesting thing that nobody is talking about. Here's a chart of exchange balances on Glassnode. So What's interesting here is the Bitcoin supply available on exchanges is really, really low. If we go back to uh, the acceleration phase of the prior cycle, so back here in October of 2020, there was about 2.9 million Bitcoin available for purchase on the exchange. Back here, and now here we are again, October of 2024 with about 2.9 million. The only difference being is back in 2020, uh, Bitcoin's price was $11,000 and today we're at $60,000. So now you couple that with the fact that we have institutional interests coming from the ETFs. We have nation state interests coming from uh, countries like El Salvador, Bhutan, and it's speculated to have Argentina joining the mix. There is so much demand for Bitcoin and there's just not enough Bitcoin to go around. You are witnessing the beginning of one of the largest supply crunches in Bitcoin's history. This whole narrative of diminishing returns for Bitcoin, I think is going to be destroyed this cycle. I think that a lot of people who are scared right now are going to kick themselves when they see Bitcoin well and true above 100K. Um, this is gonna be the cycle that surprises a lot of people. So yeah, I'm incredibly bullish. Uh, don't let the FUD sway you out of your positions. Don't get shaken out due to the headlines of the news and what you're seeing. I know a lot of people are afraid of uh, the effects of war. Uh, I will say quite briefly, I, I plan to make another video about this, but uh, Bitcoin's never existed 
outside of a war. There's always a war going on. So do take that into consideration with some of your decisions. If you're wondering, oh, I don't think Bitcoin's going to perform well during a war, there's always been a war for Bitcoin. And this is part of the reason as to why we Bitcoin, because if everybody chose Bitcoin as a currency, we wouldn't have war. The governments would be forced to ask permission to tax in order to go to war, and nobody's going to authorize that. Now, I do understand that a lot of this is hard to navigate and people are highly emotional beings. This is exactly why we created Black Box. So if you aren't already subscribed, it's free to join. It's free to uh, be a member in our VIP community. Links below. Go check out the Discord. Um, it sets up in a couple minutes and you can automate the trading strategies that we employ. Emotions do nothing for profits. If you struggle with the emotional side of trading and would prefer an algorithm to make decisions for you, then definitely sign up with Black Box. And with that, I will sign off. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to comment down below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? What are your thoughts? What are your targets for Bitcoin? I want to hear from you. And until next time, please trade safe. It is a jungle out there. Peace.